I'm only going to address key points about this show. Maybe a couple of backstage instances, you know, instances that happened that reflected the show. But on my Raw and SmackDown review reports this week, due to time constraints, I'm only going to just cover the basic points. So the the do the trio now of Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, and Dolph Ziggler. They come out and they address the situation as to say, all right, look. Braun Strowman was like, yeah, I wanted to cash in, but you had your dogs. They saved you, and the only reason why you're still Universal Champion, and I'm not, and it's rightfully mine, is because you had your Hounds of Justice save you. Now, I got a couple of dogs of my own to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And in Hell in a Cell, yeah, inside the structure where no one can get in or no one can get out. Wait, seriously? So you're telling me that every single Hell in a Cell match took place inside the structure and no one got in no one got out door didn't open door didn't get ripped off somewhere somebody didn't intervene seriously Braun Strowman you don't even know the history of that that people have gotten into this hell in a cell or have gotten out of the hell in a cell uh, I mean him saying that was just absolutely ridiculous to me it just was but he went on to say that with knowing to save you I will become the Universal Champion and, and, and it's rightfully mine. Yeah, you had to run down between Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. Um, yeah. What did you think was going to happen after this? Of course, The Shield come out with their original music and their original entrance. But before they even get over the guardrail, you had all these these WWE workers come out and I say workers because superstars um no they were just the middle to low card of the freaking roster so they come out and they try to prevent the three-on-three -three from even happening thanks to constable corporate Baron Kane Corbin the the acting general manager for right now and you're, you're telling me that you're not going to let this three-on-three -three take place and for somebody to stand tall. You're telling me that you're going to stop the Shield from getting their hands on these three after what was done to them last week. And then, after that, you have them arrested? You know, I understand that Constable Corbin is a heel and he's doing the whole acting general manager thing as a heel and he's Stephanie's bitch. But... Come on, man. Where is this going to lead to? Oh, yeah, it's going to lead to something later on in the show that was just total garbage as well. But anyway, oh, why is the Bella Twins facing the Riot Squad? And why are they beating the Riot Squad? Um, no, just, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, no, not hearing that. I, I, I'm just not. The Bella Twins come back. And they just basically beat the Riot Squad. Well, two members of them anyway. Which basically says, F you to the Riot Squad. That just, yeah. It, it basically just does just that. It's stupid. I, uh, uh, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Is this a new tag team? Well, it looks like it. Because after they beat the Ascension, they kind of did like the B team did when they were getting their victories. They were hugging each other and they were basically on a border borderline of making love. It was ridiculous to watch. Uh, I mean, Jason Jordan, out. But Chad Gable said he was coming to Raw and not going to be in a tag team situation like he was in Jason, with Jason Jordan. But let and behold, he's with a tag team partner again. It, <sighs> WWE logic for you is just ridiculous. I mean, yeah. So, you have Alexa Bliss versus Natalia, but before that you had the whole confrontation well the the war of words but Elias was out and then yeah he was running down the state of Ohio and, and you know Columbus Ohio and all that yeah he did, his, he did his usual shtick though walk with Elias and ran down the city that he was currently in that's what he does Alexa comes out and 
actually baits the city as to think that she's going to praise them and she downs them and say yeah she couldn't wait to get out of there and she was you know people from high school yeah she's here and they're there and she's and yeah putting herself over really basically being a Miz that's basically well no she puts herself over better than the Miz does you know at least she has done things alone but anyway Ronda Rousey comes out, Natty comes out. It was funny how she, Natty was prefer, referred to as Ronda's pet cat. But in the actual match, Alexa Bliss actually wins with an arm bar. An arm bar. A weak one at that, but trying to steal Ronda Rousey's quote unquote finisher move. And it was, you know, not really done to standard and then Ronda Rousey tries to get Alexa Alexa no out done and Alicia Fox tries to attack but to no avail Alexa Bliss does some attacking to Ronda Rousey but Ronda actually gets the upper hand and starts you know laying fists on her midsection so yeah um, that's what you have to deal with at Hell in a Cell if it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. But I doubt if it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. They may hot potato that belt back to Alexa Bliss. They, they may end up doing that. I, because this is WWE and they like to do that crap. And I'm just like, hot potatoing belt. That's one of the things I'm very, very against as far as hot potatoing belts. So, since Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre don't have anything to do, and they should be challenging for the Tag Team Championships or going... Well, Dolph Ziggler can't go for the Intercontinental Championship since the Shield has been arrested. Hmm. The funniest part is that we didn't even see neither of those belts tonight. We didn't see the Universal Championship belt nor the Intercontinental belt. We didn't see any of those belts with those people. So, um, yeah, but Baron Corbin's like, oh no, the Revival are the ones that got the Tag Team Championship title shot against the B Team. But if something were to happen to them, come on, you know where this is going. You know where this is headed. And then, mysteriously enough, the Revival have a backstage interview and they get jumped by Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. So, bibbidi bobbidi boo those are the two that challenge the B-Team. B-Team, B-Team, gets their ass beat. Oh, okay, alright, no. Yeah, I, yeah. Mm, B-Team, B-Team, loses this match. B team, B team, lost the belts. Basically, that was it. So you have new tag team champions, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Um, yeah, that was just wow. They stuck it to the revival, and they stuck it to the B team. The B team was supposed to be this thing that was supposed to keep getting lucky. Keep it. so. What's up with them now? And what's up with the revival? Who's going Is it gonna be a triple threat at freaking Hell in a Cell? What is it going to be? I, I think it's just a damn shame, that's all. It, it's funny, but it's still a damn shame. Or are the, you know, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins actually going to get the tag team belts? Hmm, is that going to happen? If Seth Rollins is going to have Intercontinental and Tag Championship belts at the same time? Well, they did have him as WWE and United States Champion at the same time, but I digress. Oh... Okay, so Keith Thompson is now the manager, is now the manager of the Authors of Pain. Now, all right, he's also the general manager of 205 Live, but he says that now that since he's the manager of them, they're going to go straight to the Raw Tag Team Championships. Okay, that remains to be seen. And then they decimate basically two ham and eggers, which Bobby the Brain Heenan would call them. Two ham and eggers, jobbers, whatever. That, I mean... You actually thought that these two had a chance against the Authors of Pain? No. Who actually thought they had... You, you thought these two had a chance against the Authors of Pain? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, I'll wait. Didn't think so. <sighs> now, Shawn Michaels comes out and he actually lays it out as far as saying that he's picking Triple H. He said that he was surprised about so many legends and Hall of Famers picking The Undertaker, but he went with Triple H. And then, Gong, The Undertaker actually comes out. Unexpected, right? 
not really. But he gets up in that ring and he lays it all out. He's like, look, I laid you out. I laid Triple H out. Yeah, you two are buddies. That's why you picked them. But every time we've been in this ring, you know, and I know what this is all about. This is about me retiring you. Shawn Michaels is like, you don't understand. You know, the game, he's still the game and he needs his win, da 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 And Undertaker, you know, of course, it all went back to Shawn Michaels and one more match thing. Because the crowd starts yelling, one more match. And Shawn Michaels is like, you hear that? I hear them. And they always ask one more match. And I honor, I want to respect, you know, being retired. He's like, yeah, I could have came back months ago or even years ago. But he said he refused out of respect for The Undertaker. And Undertaker's like, if you would come back, I'm the one that you would come after. <laughs> and that's a big hint about what's going to happen. Maybe Sean might, because Sean said that he's going to be there at that damn super show in Australia. So don't be surprised if this, this fucking heartbreak sexy boy comes out and gives that stupor kick to freaking Undertaker and costs him the match. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that happens. But it was a pretty good segment between, you know, uh, The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. It, it was. But, yeah, I just see that coming, and that just really... Undertaker's like, look, I put Triple H down he, every time we... Yeah, and I'm going to put him down again. Hmm. <sighs> it would be kind of funny if he actually does, but... And again, Shawn Michaels said that he was going to be there, so, yeah. All right, so, that Boston Hug connection, Sasha Banks and Bailey beats Ember Moon and Dana Brooke. Listen, people, do you believe in Dana Brooke? My answer is no. Most of the people's answer is no. Dana Brooks' career has been killed and murdered a long time ago, and now she says that she's done with Titus Worldwide after losing this match. Uh, yet, this is supposed to be the women's evolution, where only maybe four to five people actually do something within the divisions. It's not about everybody. Oh, the returning Bella Twins can do something. Alexa Bliss always gets thrown back in the title picture. Charlotte Flair thrown back in the title picture. But for people like Ember Moon, title shots, no. Asuka, no. It's just, yeah, Dana Brooke, yeah, please. I don't think Bailey will ever get back into the title picture unless she goes heel. And they already ruined that, so. <sighs> yeah, women's evolution, huh? And Dana Brooke just being where she is, it's just flat out ridiculous so you get Bobby Lashley that has to have a freaking in-ring session to control his anger with Jinder Mahal so Jinder again he had one of the he has one of the best interests but they won't let him use it he went from WWE champion on Smackdown to being way below the totem pole on Raw and now he's trying to and, oh God, Bobby Lashley and his mic skills are just abysmal, man. People, you know, I'm just like, please end this segment. Oh God, no. But the segment does get ended on a high note. Kevin Owens actually comes out. Oh my God, Kevin Owens, I thought he quit. I thought we were never going to see him again. Said no one because, come on people. You actually thought that Kevin Owens was gone and was just going to stay away. We would have already heard that, even through a dirt sheet, that Kevin Owens is just gone. So he just comes out, he attacks Bobby Lashley, Bobby Lashley tries to fight back, but to no avail. Power bomb on apron outside the ring by Kevin Owens to Bobby Lashley. Hmm. Alright, fine. Set up that feud and just don't have Kevin Owens get his ass whooped totally. <sighs> Braun Strowman actually has a match with Finn Balor because... Finn Balor, earlier in the night, challenged that damn corporate Corbin, that constable corporate Kane Steph bitch Corbin. And Corbin was actually like, yeah, and then he changed his mind. I have a lot of my plate, but you do have an opponent, Braun Strowman. 
Braun Strowman actually asked for some competition. So there you go. Finn Balor versus Braun Strowman. And well, what did he do? He's Strowman is accompanied by the new tag team champions. It's funny because JoJo didn't even announce them as that. <sighs> Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Oh, by the way, speaking of abysmal, yeah, Renee Young on commentary. Yeah, she's almost as bad as Mike McGurk, you know, freaking the Duke, and the Miz on commentary. I mean, she, yeah, she's that bad. She's, she's almost as bad as that, yeah. But anyway, Braun Strowman actually defeats Finn Balor. And then these three guys were Strowman, Ziggler, and McIntyre was about to mock the shield and about to give that triple power bomb to Finn Balor. But they gave us an update on the shield all night long as far as going to act in front of a judge and being released. And so they came back in an ambulance. And then they tried to go to the ring. But guess what? They get jumped. They get jumped by a lot of the people that were, I get the heels in the back. They get jumped by them. Uh, they get laid out. Seth Rollins took a terrible spill when they threw him into the ambulance from the ramp. And the glass broke in it. Yeah, it cut his arm up. You could actually see that happen. Roman Reigns gets messed up. Dean Ambrose gets his ass whooped. And then you have Braun and... McIntyre and Ziggler have the nerve to go raw, and basically that's pretty much it, and that ends the show. And I'm like, is this supposed to hype up Hell in a Cell to the point where I'm going to be like, wow, I can't wait to see this event? Yeah, mm -mm. it just doesn't. So you're going to have the Shield most likely beginning their terrorizing next week because they're going to have some hunting to do, and. Baron Corbin's going to be their last stop. And once that happens, that's pretty much it. You're not going to... Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what, what are you going to do after that? What, you're going to fire the shield? Yeah, right. Yeah, okay, I see that happening. But anyway, that was Raw, and that was my thoughts upon the show, and that's my show here. And I, I'm just... Yeah. What did you think about the show? Once again, do you think my opinions are full of shit? If you agree or disagree with me, please leave a comment below if you're on YouTube watching this. If you're on Spreaker.com or on Apple's iTunes, once again, thank you for joining along. Once again, if you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit subscribe, set up those notifications. No, I'm not excited about Hell in a Cell. New Tag Team Champions, The Shield get arrested, they come back, and they get jumped. Didn't see the Intercontinental Belt or the Universal Championship Belt all night. Hmm. Is that a sign the thing for things to come here? Drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over top rope, both feet hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme, and the theme is go. Credits.